I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you.
won't find her coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, why you won't tear down coming after me. There's no shadow you Hey guys, welcome back tonight. I hope that today has been a day of rest, something that you've just been able to experience the presence of the Lord as you drew near to Him today. And so tonight, I want us to continue in our series that of great prayers in the Old Testament. Uh, I want us to start getting our mind wrapped around uh, different ways that we need to be praying. And so uh, we're going to continue our, our series tonight. So if you have your Bibles, turn to Psalms 119. We're going to read one verse there, uh, verse 18. Psalms 119, verse 18. While you're turning there, I just want to remind you, don't forget that you can, you can give. You can give online at www.wfaliving.com. There's a place on the, uh, on the webpage where you can push give. Follow all the instructions there. Also, we have a text to give. You can text give and the word give, and we'll put a link uh, in, in this video, uh, the number where you could go. Just follow all the instructions there. Or if you would like to, you can still mail your, your tithes and offerings to the church, and we'll be able to, as long as we're able to get out and about, deposit those checks uh, in your offering. Uh, you can send it to P.O. Box 1085, Win, Arkansas, 72396. Or you can send it to the physical address, 1900 Kilo Road, Wynn, Arkansas, 72396. Uh, so you can send it to those, uh, those two different addresses, and we'll make sure that you can uh, uh, get your tithes and everything uh, deposited. But turn with me, if you will, to Psalms 119, verse 18. One simple scripture, and it says this, Open my eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of your law. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that we have your word and that your word brings illumination and opens our eyes to who you are. And I pray tonight that as we get ready to dive into your word, that we may glean from it in our prayer life, Father, that we would know how to pray to you, that you would open our hearts and our minds, that we may see you the way you want us to see you. And we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. So tonight, I want us to talk about the prayer for spiritual illumination. The prayer for spiritual illumination. Open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of your law. You see, tonight in this study, we are going to examine this prayer that David prayed. Open my eyes that I may see wonderful things in your law. You see, our objective will be to see exactly what it tells us and then to suggest ways in which you and I should pray this prayer, how we should pray this prayer, for it is a prayer which should rise from our hearts. Oh God, show us who you are through your word when we dive into your word. You see, if we consider Psalms 119 verse 18 carefully, we will see that, it, it, that this one petition embodies five special truths. And I want to share those a little bit with you before we get into the main gist of the lesson for tonight. The first thing that this, this truth that comes out of this, this, this uh, uh, verse is that the Bible is a very unique book. It's a very unique book. In this section of the psalm, it, it, it describes the Word of God like this. It describes it as your Word in verse 17. Verse 18, it says your law. 
Verse 19, it says your commands. Your laws, verse 20, uh, states to the Bible. Your statutes, verse 22 and 24 of this same chapter, states about God's word. And he also says that in verse 23, your decrees. It's a very unique book. But what's so fascinating is that each time it was describing this book, it would always use the pronoun your. You see, the Bible is unique because it is God's book. He is the author. David's Bible was much smaller than our Bible today, but now we have incomplete, a, a completed canon of 66 different books, all of which are unique as they are inspired by God. We see in 2 Timothy 3, uh, 16 and also 2 Peter chapter 1, 21 that the scripture has said that it is God breathed as God moved upon the, the hearts of men as they begin to write and to pen the scripture for us today. But you see, another truth is out of this scripture is that the Bible contains wonderful things. There, it is jam-packed full of truths and promises and, and, and principles of life and the kingdom of God in which we need to live by. See, David says this in his prayer, and when we think of the scope of the Bible's context, its history, its types, its poetry, its doctrines, and its prophecies, we at once begin to realize how wonderful this book is. It tells us about God. It tells us about mankind. It reveals to us about sin and its penalty, death. It reveals to us heaven and hell and eternity. But above all, this word right here, these, these, these scriptures and, and, and verses reveal the very plan of salvation that Jesus came in when he died for us. It reveals all of this to us. It's a special book, and it tells us wonderful, wonderful things. <clears throat> You see, this, this, this verse also gives us this wonderful truth that before we can see the wonderful things that this scripture and this book holds for all of humanity, our eyes must be open. You see, it was that this that David prayed that he might see these things hidden in God's word. You see, as we pray the prayer of Psalms 119, verse 18, the Lord himself uh, comes near, revealing himself to us and opening our eyes so that, that our hearts burn within us and we hold fast to his statues. You see, when we pray this prayer that God begins to uh, remove the layers upon layers of his truth and his mysteries of his word and that it becomes life to us and our eyes become, uh, uh, it becomes a revelation, if you will, in our hearts. Only God, here's the fact about this scripture, that only God can open our eyes to see the wonderful things in his word. You see, we need, or what we need, is spiritual illumination. We need God to let the words of his, his scripture, the words of his law, the words of his book to be open to us, to be illuminated in a special way. Matthew chapter 11, verse 25 says that at that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of the heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and the understand, and, and understanding and revealed them to little children. My friends, we need God's help in understanding his word. Psalm 16 verse 11 says that you make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. We need God to make known his path of life to us. And the way that he makes the path of life known to us is by getting into his word. Allowing the scriptures to come alive to us. We need to pray this special prayer that God will illuminate to us his special truth for life. And we also see in this scripture this simple truth that to gain this illumination, we must pray this prayer like David did every time we open his word. So how should we pray? What things should we pray to see? 
there are some things that I want to bring to surface. Now, these are just a couple of things. This is not an exhaustive list because the more we begin to pray, the more the Holy Spirit will reveal to us the, the character of God, the, the passions of God, and the, and the plan and the will of God for our lives. So these are just simple things that I want to bring to your uh, awareness this evening. The first thing is that we need to pray, open my eyes that I may see myself and my sinfulness of sin. You see, we should begin here when we pray. You see, we need to pray for when we were, we were born into sin. We have committed sin. And we only ever see ourselves and our sin as we begin to open the Word of, of God and, and His book and His Scripture begins to reveal to us that we are sinful. You see, in these days, we are inclined to think that because of the progress of humanity that we have gotten smarter, we have had technology at our tips, that we have become more... Uh, 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 we're not so bad, actually. We, we've just come to a place where uh, we're perfect or we're becoming perfect or we're not as bad as, as the world may seem that we are bad. But Scripture tells us of the sinfulness of the human heart. Genesis chapter 6, verse 5, we see that the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. You see, Isaiah 64, verse 6 and 7 says this, that we have all become like one who is unclean and all of our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. We all fade like a leaf and our, in our iniquities like the wind that takes us away. There is no one who calls upon your name, talking about God, who rouses himself to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have made us melt in the hand of our iniquities. Also, the book of Matthew, chapter 15, and verse 19, brings this to, la to, to our remembrance as well. He says, For out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, and slander. In the depths of man's heart is sinfulness. The ways of life is sinfulness. The nature of, of humanity is sinfulness. And the Word of God needs to illuminate these things to us so that we can turn to a Savior who can save us from our sins. Lot had this experience. He, he had a walk with the Lord. He, he and Abraham understood who Jehovah was, who Yahweh was. And yet he had a black, backsliding moment in his own life. Achan also had a moment of deceitfulness as he was seeing the hand of God being generous towards the children of Israel as they were encountering and, and conquering the, the promised land that he took the things that were uh, uh, dedicated to God and he stole those possessions. And at the battle of Ai, they lost because there was sin in the camp. David, David had impurities within his own life where he went up to the top of his mansion and he saw Bathsheba bathing there and he had an act of adultery with her. And not only was there an act of adultery, but also murder come behind it to, to cover up the lies that was being portrayed by, da uh, by David. Peter, Peter had a denial. Here he was walking with Jesus. He talked with Jesus. He ate with Jesus. He heard all of the lessons that Jesus uh, 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 was speaking. And yet when it come down to the nitty gritty, Peter denied Jesus. Are we any better than these that we just talked about? When God shows us ourselves, the revelation is very humbling. You see, when God revealed to Job who he was in the grand scheme of the kingdom of God, Job said this in Job 40, verse 4. He says, Behold, I am of small account. What shall I answer you? I lay my hand on my mouth. Isaiah had an, an, an encounter with God. And when he had this encounter with God and his eyes were open of who he was in the sight of God, he penned these words in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 5. He says, And I said, Woe is me. For I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King and the Lord of hosts. 
David. David, in his many encounters with God, began to pen these words in Psalms uh, chapter 22, verse 6. He says, But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by humankind and despised by the people. Peter had this understanding of who he was in the eyes of God. The prodigal son had this revelation that I am nothing, but at least the servants in my father's house are taken care of. Even Paul, Paul himself said that he was the chief of all sinners my friends the scripture is there to show us of our need for a savior and when we begin to pray to God God illuminate the truths of your word that as I begin to discover who you are that it will reveal who I am and how much I need you so we need to pray that our eyes will be open to the full need of our hearts for God secondly we need to pray this way that we open my eyes that I may see the love of God and his mercy and his grace extended towards me in the person of Jesus Christ. You see, we know the story of grace uh, uh, that God extends towards his, his creation well by John three sixteen, that For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. My friends, the great proof of God's love is seen at Calvary. And when our eyes are open to see the Lord Jesus dying there for us, we can cry out, the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And I can humbly say, my Lord, my God. See, have you had this view of Christ? Have you had it, this view of Christ crucified for you and then Christ raised from the grave and exalted as your Savior at the right hand of God? I want you to realize that Philippians 2, 5 through 11 is this, this illumination of what Jesus did for you that our eyes need to be open to this. Let me read it to you in, in Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 through 11. It says this, have this mind among you yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who through though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God at things that to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that's above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow in, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. My friends, we need God to show us who He is to us. We need God to show us His love. We need God to show us His mercy. We need God to show us His grace. And the only way that those things can come to our hearts and a revelation in our, in our minds and in our spirit is through the Word of God. We need to pray, Oh God, show me. Oh God, may I see, may my heart see the mercies that are extended towards me, the grace that is extended towards me and the love that you have for me today. It only comes through the revelation of God's word. Thirdly, we need to have the prayer that says, open my eyes that I may see the kind of Christian that you want me to be. See, do you ever read your word and this prayer is on your lips that as you begin to unfold the simple biblical truths and principles of the kingdom of God, that God would begin to show you who you need to be in, in this walk with him? If you do, then, then when we read Psalms chapter 1, verse 1 through 3, we understand that we don't stand in the, in the seat or sit in the seat of the scornful or in the ungodly, that we don't take their counsel, but that, that when we're planted, that we are like a tree uh, that, that, that's, that leaves never wither in its season. 
You see, we see these, these simple truths like in Revela uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 37, that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus, that, that we can overcome these things. God wants every one of his children to be victorious in Christian living and fruitful in Christian service. Do you realize that God has a path of victory for you? Every time that we face temptation, every time we find moments of weakness, that when we get into his word we can ask him to reveal to us the things the paths that will rescue us from the temptations that the path that will rescue us or give us a way of escape my friends God has made us victorious and the only way we know that we can be victorious is him to begin to speak this to us through his word because many in society today will tell us that we're failures and many today will tell us that we're defeated because we have x sickness or or this kind of disease but can I tell you today, if it is through the word of God that we have an understanding that we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. But not only does he want us to be victorious and that he has to show us the kind of victor or the man of valor or the woman of valor, a, 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 a warrior that you are through his word. But he wants you to realize that you are fruitful and that you can be fruitful in, in Christian service. He wants you to demonstrate the fruits of love and peace peace and joy and, and patience. He wants you to experience the fruit of, uh, of self-control. He wants you to understand that these things are at your disposal and that you can be this in Him. But the only way we can have these, these fruitfulness in our lives is ask God through prayer to open our hearts to see who we need to be in Him and that we may become those things through Him. He also has made every provision for for us to live for him and to serve uh, serve him in this way my friends if we will ask him holy spirit is there more god is there more of you i i can't live this life on my own and the big more you begin to to pray this that god will open your hearts that he you will be able to see him the way that he wants to show you to yourself and you begin to get into his word you will find out that the, it is not by might nor by power but by his spirit you will understand that when Jesus said go and tarry until you be endued with power from on high you will have an understanding that when he said to the disciples that when the spirit of the Lord comes upon you and the power of God will come upon you you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria unto the other most parts of the world the only way we can understand that he has given us the ability to live for him is asking him God open my eyes that I may see who I need to be in you. And the only way he can do that is allowing his word to illuminate himself to us. My friends, let us pray these prayers that God will open up our eyes. You see, the Lord Jesus has died and risen again to give us his own victory or his own victorious life. And this life is imparted to us by the person of the Holy Spirit. When you give your life over to Jesus, he imparts into you not a defeated spirit. He doesn't impart into you a spirit of fear. But my friends, when we turn our lives over to Jesus and we pray to him, open our eyes that we may see who we are in you, he downloads uh, into your spirit the, the, the attitude of Christ, the person of Christ, and we are transformed into his image. Church, I want to encourage you that while you're at home, while you're washing dishes, while you're washing and folding the laundry, while you're working out in the yard, while you're tinkering inside your house trying to find something to do, as your hands are finding things to do, let your spirit cry out to God, oh God, open my eyes that I may see you. Open my eyes that I may see what you want me to be because when you pray this prayer and when you dive into his his word, his word, this unique book with wonderful things. God will illuminate himself to you and he will show himself in a special way.
These are the three special prayers. And again, my friends, these are just three things. This is not an exhaustive uh, a prayer that we need to pray. But the more you begin to pray, God, show me yourself. God, show me who I need to be. God, uh, uh, reveal your word to me that he will unfold multi, many, many blessings to you and multifacets of his principles of the kingdom of God in your life. And many other things will be revealed as you begin to go on this journey. So let us pray. Let us pray this prayer and cultivate the habit of doing so often because sometimes we get, we get narrow focus. That sometimes we forget that there are more things that God wants to show us. So we have to constantly be praying, God, open my eyes. And when we pray these prayers, we have to be willing to allow the Holy Spirit that lives within inside of us to answer these prayers. He's waiting to answer these prayers. He's waiting to illuminate the Word of God to you and illuminate to you the need in which you have in your life. Let us come to God. Let us pray to Him. God, illuminate unto me. Show me who you are. Let us pray this special prayer that David did in Psalms 119 verse 18. Open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of your law. I want to pray for you tonight. I want to pray that as you begin to to digest the word of God as you begin to dive in your own private prayer closet that you in, in time of discipleship <clears throat> that you will begin to see God in a special way that he will reveal himself in a clearer way and in a more profound way than you have ever seen him before can I pray for you right now, Father? I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that as we begin to, to uh, focus in on you, as we begin to zone in on you in our times of prayer, that as we begin to see you, Father, that our hearts will say, open our eyes, that we may behold your glory, that we may behold your goodness, that you will reveal unto us the wonderful things of your word. Father, I pray that each one that's watching this video today, everyone that's watching this message tonight, God, that they will have a prayer, that they will have a hunger, that they'll have a desire, oh God, to see you the way that you want to manifest yourself, that they will see you in the ways that who you truly are. And God, may they see who they are through your word. May your word take the blinders off of their life so that they are no longer believing the lies of the enemy nor believing the lies of the world, but they will see you and see who they are in, through you and through your eyes. Oh God, open the eyes of our hearts that we may behold your blessings and your beauty and your glory in a special way. Father, I thank you right now and I ask this right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I want to encourage you to still pray. Take time to pray. Don't let these, these messages, these videos that, that you're watching on the internet just become, uh, okay, click, I've done it, I've seen it. Let these be starters for you. Let this be the lighter fluid that will get you to a place where you'll go and you'll begin to focus on God and pray towards God and, and have an encounter with Him. I pray that this message today was encouraging and the message this morning was encouraging encouraging to you. I pray that this week uh, that God will give you creativity, that he will give you favor, that he will give you protection, that your, your soul will be lifted up and encouraged in these days that are lies ahead. Be encouraged. God is still on the throne and he is still involved in your life and his presence is ever real where you're at today. If we can be a blessing, contact us we want to be there for you. If you need special prayer, we'll make a, a, a link uh, uh, available to you that you can, you can text to us and we will contact you and pray with you. Let this be a blessing to you. Communicate with us. Keep in touch with us. We love you and there's nothing you can do about it. We'll see you later. Bye-bye, guys.